We have the privilege today to talk to Seema Shine. She is ex Mossad, uh, INSS, and uh, Ministry of Strategic Affairs. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. You have quite a list of credentials in intelligence, um, expert on Iran. Can you, can you explain why you are so um, educated in these matters of national security? Well, you know, uh, it's all my life, so I don't have a good reason for that. <laughs> but but um, you live in a state like Israel and uh, you ask yourself, how can I contribute something to the, this state? And I think, the, uh, unfortunately, I would say most of our, uh, of our 70, 76 years of independence, not of the Jewish people, but of the independence of the state of Israel, of course, uh, security was the main issue. Uh, so I went to, un to university, etc. I'm uh, learning a little bit about the Middle East, and then I decided to try and practice. And uh, and the rest is history. I thought I'm going for some years, and then it uh, lasted for some decades. One of the things that's uh, impressed me with everyone we've spoken to in Israel so far is how everyone seeks to find their part in defending Israel, supporting Israel. The national pride is incredible in this country. Uh, I wish it was that way in America. Unfortunately, it's not. But this goes from the youth all the way to someone who's already completed their life serving their country. They're saying, sign me back up. How can I help? Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's, that's very correct. And uh, especially when th when traumatic things like the 7th of October are happening and what happened on the 7th is something that uh, even in Israel we didn't see before because uh, it, it was a, a mix of civilians fighting as well as uh, soldiers mm -hmm. and people that, uh, that were uh, caught in a situation where they had to, to, to practice some and yeah that's, uh, that's correct. Is, uh, the, the Israeli society uh, is very much um, united when it comes to uh, such a, a situation. It's not always united, as you all know, uh, but when it comes to, to such a situations where there is a, a real existential threat to the state, no question. Well, from your perspective and your understanding on national security, what is the greatest threat uh, to Israel's security right now? So, you know, I used for years to say that, the, uh, that first of all, there is no uh, existential threat Israel is a strong state and the people and we will uh, um, um, survive every, uh, every uh, challenge we'll have. I used to say it um, and I used also to say that if, if there is a threat that I'm really concerned about is Iran becoming a nuclear state. Because the combination of a radical uh, Islamic state we, uh, uh, leadership with a, with a nuclear capability is something that I thought could be very uh, dangerous. But uh, what happened on the 7th of October has put things in uh, didn't change my evaluation that this is the uh, threat, but uh, has put um, also um, some question mark on uh, uh, the fact that uh, conventional um, uh, conventional uh, threat is not a r something that is not to be considered. And uh, what happened uh, with Hamas, I think, um, uh, the, uh, there are many questions why it happened, how it happened, how Israel didn't, uh, and how the intelligence didn't, uh, didn't uh, evaluate it happening, uh, even though they had a lot of uh, different signs. Um, it shows us that sometimes uh, asymmetric war between a state like Israel that is armed with the best uh, uh, ammunition that ha is from the US and from Israel and uh, so sophisticated and everything, at the end of the day when something happens uh, uh, with a force that uh, called terror, but I never called them a terror organization because they have actually, uh, they, are, uh, they, are, uh, they have a state, a mini state, but, uh, but uh, still it is a terror uh, activity or partially. Uh, and you see that uh, something that happened here is also in a, in, it wasn't existential, I think, and, uh, and it's not, uh, and Israel could overcome it and will overcome it, but um, it puts uh, things into perspective. It's not only nuclear, which is always uh, a real threat, 
it's, it's sometimes also conventional uh, war that makes it very, very difficult. Mm. So, th so this threat that um, was Iran and we're seeing it continue to evolve. Uh, you were speaking to us before the interview about how you can get so focused on learning the patterns and habits of your enemy that it's easy to miss when they change. How do you handle a dangerous government like Iran now knowing that they can pivot or the situation can change at any moment? How do you handle security at that yeah. point? Um, so first of all, um, I have to say that um, what we see today in the Middle East is uh, a, a result of Iranian planning for years, uh, um, planning and, uh, and putting a lot of uh, money, resources and uh, um, training and everything in different militias, proxies around the, the region. I think it's, uh, it's a wake-up call, for, should be a wake-up call for everyone. Because um, what we see today is that uh, once the war in between Israel and Gaza started, it um, immediately stopped to be just a war between Israel and Gaza. It is a war on our northern border vis-a-vis -vis Hezbollah, that is the main proxy of Iran. It is uh, also from uh, uh, militias that Iran brought to Syria, uh, from Iraq, mili pro-Iranian militias in Iraq, from the Houthis in Yemen. And uh, one, what, what I think what we see today is... Um, is the result of what Iran has been doing for years. Uh, we have been talking about it, but everybody thought, well, the Iranians have some militias here, militias there, they are send selling arms, they are selling missiles. And uh, suddenly everybody sees that they can stop a, a, a trade when it comes through the uh, Red Sea. Uh, they, can, uh, they can stop, you know, the uh, Eilat uh, airport, um, port in, uh, in South Israel doesn't operate anymore because ships cannot get there. So they can put a huge, a huge harm on, on, uh, on Israel, surrounding it with what we in Israel call uh, a, a fire ring mm -hmm. around, around yeah. Israel. Um, so we, we followed everything that was happening and we understood it. And, uh, and I can say that um, uh, even I didn't, um, what I think is uh, new in, uh, in the current events is that not only that we knew all these militias and we knew that Iran is trying to concentrate them together, we knew they have opened a war room in Beirut that all representatives were sitting there and coordinating with each other. But the, um, the um, amount of cooperation and the amount of the willingness of those militias to, to pay the price. You know, uh, Hezbollah has more than 300 uh, uh, its fighters killed, a lot of destruction and everything, and they are continuing and saying, we will continue until the last day of the war between Israel and Gaza. And this is a kind of, uh, of uh, an achievement on the side of the Iranians that have succeeded to make those all together uh, feeling that they have to support each other. And I will say to your question that also the attack of uh, Iran on Israel, which was an unprecedented event, mm. and its amount and everything, uh, is also, I think, uh, everybody asked me whether the, uh, um, the uh, killing of the uh, uh, IRGC uh, officer, high-ranking officer in Damascus was, was um, did the Israeli intelligence um, uh, anticipate such a, a reaction? And, uh, well, I don't know, I'm not in the intelligence anymore, so <laughs> bless God I don't have to deal with all this uh, small uh, information, but um, if I'm looking from outside, my, my, uh, my feeling is that um, uh, what happened in this case, it's not that it wasn't, you know, when you put uh, s different uh, possible scenarios, you are always put a scenario, you don't believe it will happen, but <laughs> it should be on the list. <laughs> so I'm sure it was on the list, but not in the first, second, third place. Wow. And I think uh, part of it is because Israel uh, has been uh, conducting a war against uh, uh, the proxies of Iran for a long time, and Iranians in Syria, and one, two, three, four times you succeed, on the fifth time you miscalculate. Wow. Um, I know our government, uh, American government, has been pressuring Israel to try to make peace here and there and don't retaliate when, when Iran just lobbied over 300, you know, drones and missiles into the country. That's unprecedented. If that happened in America, we'd be guns blazing, you know, take them down. But the world is pressuring y'all 
to let them be, don't retaliate, don't defend yourselves, they have no clue that Iran would be coming for them next. And, and that, no that's out of, out of their mind. So how should the world react to this kind of danger with Iran? What should the world do to join together to stop this, this sort of evil? Actually, this is the question I'm putting every, every foreigner I meet. Yeah. Because I, I, you know, after the, two years ago when Iran started supporting Russia, with uh, drones against Ukraine. Well, Ukraine war is in the middle, it's in, the, in Europe, on the continent of Europe. And still when I meet Europeans I, and they know, they understand, they understand the uh, contribution of Iran to the prolongation of the war. And I ask them, so what are you doing against that? So they are calling them, they are talking to them. They are, uh, here and there you see sanctions put on them, but that's not uh, something uh, that, uh, that really represents what should have been done against Iran. And I think, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, in the last, uh, in, I think in the two last uh, terms of elections in the US, there was an Iranian uh, involvement through cyber and other um, and media and others. I'm sure it will be happen now again. Uh, it happened also in Europe. Uh, Iranians were uh, uh, trying, most of the, uh, most of the uh, attempts were, uh, were prevented, but they were trying to kill uh, opposition people on European, in European countries. You know, they are all over the place, and at the end of the day, um, there is a, not a united front uh, of the like-minded, US and the like-minded countries, that decide to, with, uh, and I'm not talking of attacking Iran, I know everybody is afraid of the option of attacking Iran, which, okay, Never mind. It's <laughs> on the uh, table. It needs yeah. to be on the table. <laughs> it should be on the table, yeah. even uh, in uh, pronouncing it uh, as, as an uh, option. But uh, there are so many other things. Iran doesn't want to be isolated, doesn't want to be excluded from different international uh, uh, organizations, places. Uh, you, uh, so there is a lot to do if there is a united front that decides that Iran should go back to its normal size, which is quite big, but shouldn't be even bigger and in influencing the region. And uh, one has to remember, it's not only Israel that is threatened by Iran. It's Saudi Arabia, the Gulf states. We know, we remember what happened on September 2019 when they decided to shoot drones and missiles on the uh, f in oil facilities of Aramco. So it's not only it's not only Israel. And at the end of the day, this is uh, something that should be stopped. And um, I hope something will change because things are evolving a little bit. It seems easy for other nations to point the finger at Israel and say, that's not my problem, this is an issue between y'all. But you're saying, no, this is a global situation. And if exactly. they were to have their way here, they're just gonna continue to move on. Exactly. Uh, and I agree, you know, let's, let's cut them off, let's isolate them, let's sanction them so that they feel the pressure of the world saying, you better behave <laughs> or and else we're gonna... And you know, Iran is not, a, a, they are very strong on missiles and drones, but they are not a strong state from the point of view of economics, mm -hmm. of the support of their population that doesn't support them. So it's not a regime that, you know, is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, successful in all it's doing. They are, uh, they are very strong on drones and missiles, but uh, not uh, in air, uh, airplanes and, they are, and not with the population that mm -hmm. hate them. There was just uh, two, three days ago there was a second round of elections to, uh, to parliament and uh, in uh, Tehran 7% of the people went, they say 7, probably 5% went to, to vote. People don't, uh, don't, uh, don't trust this regime wow. and don't want to support this regime. So they, they don't have how to do it because once you go to the streets, as they went to the street, they are killed. But uh, so they, are, they don't go to vote. This is one of the ways that they, they, they uh, exercise their their right, they're, they're their free, right exactly. freedom of speech without freedom of speech. Yeah, exactly. So, so I, Iran pr presents this facade of strength through their missiles, but yet they don't have the infrastructure through exactly. the people to exactly. back that up, and we have to keep that in Very mind. Very well put. I, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, we, we talked a little bit before the interview uh, more so about the understanding of intelligence and how you decipher and decide you know, what is a threat, what isn't a threat. Um, did we know, was there anything that had been said to Israel before this attack that this is coming? Did the intelligence have you know, a tip or anything? For October 7th, yeah. October 7th, you say? Not yeah. the Iranian. Uh, first of all, Israel had uh, 
some intelligence. You know, the problem is, for instance, uh, Israel had the um, information on the training that Hamas is doing. Mm. And we, we knew exactly that they are tra training on penetrating into houses, into uh, everything was uh, trained for, for some years. Uh, I, I must say that, uh, ironically, uh, even though there is nothing um, that can be uh, ironic now, but uh, they had a movie on the TV that exactly what happened on the 7th of October, exactly. But, you know, no, nobody was thinking that it's something real. Well, they are training, they are training. Every army is training. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean they are going to execute this. Uh, so that, that I think this was part of the uh, part of the problem. The other part is, uh, of course, the um, at the end of the day, um, I'm sorry to say, but a lot of arrogance on the side of the Israelis. We, the Israelis, the sophisticated, technologically sophisticated, we have all, all these cameras we have everywhere. So this is the first thing that they have uh, uh, that they have tackled. They have shot on these uh, cameras, and we didn't see anything. So there is a mix of, uh, of uh, and there were, of course, in the last night, uh, it was published already, there were some signs, uh, and there was a, a phone call between the chief of staff and some others, mm -hmm. uh, trying to understand uh, what does si these signs are. They started to use, uh, the sign was that they started to use Israeli SIMs in their phones. Israel SIM cards. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, um, and uh, th that was an alarm sign, and uh, there was this uh, call uh, during the, I think, 12 o'clock in the night or something like that. Um, the problem, as always it happens, it wasn't the first time ever they, they did it. Probably they trained it before once or twice. So everybody said, okay, it's a sign, no question, but it happened in the past and nothing happened after that. And then they decided that they will talk again in the morning too late. Oh, man. Pushing it off till the morning, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> well, to, to reference what you said earlier, though, you said that the problem with um, intelligence is that we get stuck in a pattern of believing this pattern is the only thing that can happen, and yeah. so we miss. Can you explain that? Because I thought that was brilliant. I think what happens uh, in intelligence, that's my experience also, um, that um, the more you are an expert and you follow the pattern of the other side and the logic of the other side and you, you believe and you read these speeches and you, you think you really understand the other side, when the other side decides to change direction, mm -hmm. you, cannot, you cannot imagine it. You are following the same pattern that you already were such an expert on that. Yeah. So, yeah. so like, you know, Iran threatens for years, they're going to wipe Israel off the face of the earth, but they always use their proxies. Then when they actually start shooting missiles over, everybody's like, well, this isn't what they do. And so yeah. it was a shock to you people. You know, and uh, one has to remember, uh, I don't know who did it, but according to uh, foreign reports, it's Israel has uh, assassinated Fahizadeh, the head of the uh, military nuclear program in Iran, wow. on Iranian soil, and nothing happened like that. So there is a reason to... Uh, to believe that they are deterred from attacking directly Israel. And actually what Iran in this war showed is for, uh, for six months, they showed that they are willing to operate all their proxies, but not themselves, and not to be involved themselves in the war. So there is a reason to believe that they, are, uh, that they don't want to be, be uh, in, uh, involved in the war. But I think that this time it's a combination. First of all, and this is important to mention, and it also is connected to what we have been talking until now, in Iran there is a change of the political, of the p political high echelon uh, of, the, of the regime. Um, uh, if we saw, let's say, for f five years ago or something, we, we could see around the table of, the, of, uh, of uh, consultations, we could see some different voices. Not that anyone was a reformist, liberal or something like yeah. that, but different voices. And uh, now, what we see now is that the lead, once the leader decided that the, that, the minister, that the president that was elected in 2021 will be Raisi, which is incompetent but very dedicated to the leader yeah. uh, and they, all the, all the uh, important jobs are by people like him, very radical, conservative, very radical. Yeah. Uh, the group surrounding the leader today is very much influenced by the I Revolutionary Guard, IRGC, mm -hmm. and very radical pe person, persons. And therefore, when it comes to a decision, I think we should 
take into account a decision that was not taken before, something more radical, because the, the, the system is much more radical today than it was five, ten years ago. Not that Rouhani was such a moderate yeah. person, <laughs> yeah. but at the end of the day, he was trying a little bit to take into consideration also Western interests and mm. how, uh, how to improve the economic situation in, in Iran and others. So he was willing to make different compromises. Mm. This kind of people today, they are not there. They are strong, they believe that they are, they believe they are strong, that they have drones and missiles, and they should, uh, shouldn't be deterred in any way. And I think this is an important uh, evaluation that should be uh, taken into consideration, not only by Israel, but also by others when it will come to issues like supporting Russia, like uh, killing uh, terror activity on different places. Uh, you know, it's, uh, unfortunately, I have to mention it, even though uh, I am very much known for my uh, admiration, uh, admiration to the to the U.S. and to uh, I really think uh, it's uh, Israel's ally for years, and uh, and it's something that should be said again and again. But having said that, I think that uh, the fact that uh, some ex uh, high-ranking officials in the U.S. are uh, I guarded, I are guarded by uh, the FBI and others yeah. because of threat from Iran is something that shouldn't be accepted at all. Mm. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, Secretary Pompeo, uh, mm -hmm. Bolton, others. So this is something that uh, Iran feels that they can do it. Yeah. If the U.S. Is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, doesn't retaliate in a way that... So this is something that I think it's an example, it's a small one, but it is something that should be ta taken into consideration of policies. Iran should not be uh, feeling in any way that they are, you know, they are so strong that nobody is going to hurt them in any way, because I don't think they are so strong. Yeah. So we're, we, we've failed in the past, basically, because we've allowed them to threaten us, in essence. We've done nothing to, to stand up and say, no, you're not allowed to do this. Now we're dealing with Iran that is more radical, that is more unified, and, and we should take them more seriously. How do you say we should handle Iran differently now? Though? Yeah, America. And I, I, I would add before to what you said, that it's not only that they are more unified and more strong and have a lot of proxies in the region and are threatening others, they are also part of a camp. Today, they are part of Russia, China, North Korea. Ooh, wow. It's not just, uh, just Iran. And they feel that they are, what they are saying, and I think they believe in that, that the West in, uh, is uh, in a path of deterioration, uh, this is the, the new uh, world world will be different. The U.S. will not be ruling, uh, not be uh, the, the um, major superpower. Yeah. And Russia, China, North Korea and Iran, they, this is the, the future, mm -hmm. as they are uh, saying. And I think this is something that um, I don't think Russia will come to support them the way the U.S. came to support us, no question. But they feel strong because of being part of a, of a system that is anti-US. Mm. And this is something uh, anti-Israel in some cases, but that's not the main case. The main case of Russia and China is anti-US. Yeah. And Iran feels that it belongs to the, to the uh, proper uh, camp that uh, has a future. Yeah, the, the American Haters Club. Exactly. In a sense, yeah. Exactly. And it's, it's kind of scary because, like we said, we made mistakes in the past, our government, in trying to um, allow them to enrich uranium in a peaceful way. They, they, you know, we gave them a timetable in which they were allowed to do certain things and we lifted all these sanctions and that, uh, in a sense, uh, gave them more time to prepare this nuclear weapon, which has been their ambition vocally for, for decades. Are we to expect that they will complete this nuclear weapon? <laughs> Uh, this is the question today. Um, um, there is a paper that I and a friend here in, and the colleague here in the institute uh, will publish today. Will be published today exactly on this issue. Mm. Oh, wow. And the, the and um, and the answer is uh, it's not a yes or no, mm -hmm. but uh, the answer is that um, Iran is today the closest that it could be to the possibility to take the decision, the political, the strategic decision to have a nuclear cap a military capability. Uh, it's not anymore a technical issue. 
uh, it's only a political issue. Wow. And, uh, and when it comes to a political issue, as, as we have been talking before, uh, um, we might uh, miscalculate the moment when they will do it. And what I can say is that um, in the last uh, couple of months, or in the last uh, half a year, I would say, there is more and more talking in Iran, uh, including uh, as, as, uh, ex head of Atomic uh, Energy uh, Committee in Iran, that, uh, say that, uh, that are saying we have all the components, uh, and if we decide, we can have a bomb. But we don't decide, and what they say is there is a fatwa of the leader that, say, that, say the, that, it's, uh, that uh, they shouldn't um, um, develop a nu uh, nuclear uh, capability, a military nuclear capability, but the fatwa can be changed every minute, and this is nothing uh, important uh, to mention. Um, so um, uh, before, when I was, uh, was thinking what could be the situation uh, where Iran will decide to break out to a uh, military capability, I thought it should be in a combination where Iran feels that it will not be, that doing that will not harm the system, will mm. not, uh, so we have to, uh, what I thought is that a lot of other crises in the world should be attracting the attention of uh, the US and Israel, and unfortunately Israel now stuck in a war, the U.S. is stuck with Israel in kind of a war, in a election year, and so many other things. The, the tension between China, Russia, and the U.S. is very high. Uh, there is a war in Europe. And I ask myself whether the Iranians will not uh, decide that this is the proper time. I'm not saying they are going to decide. I don't know, and uh, of course. And I think what is uh, uh, and the answer the, here is that we should, with the West, but. Israel is less important, the U.S. is the important one, together with European countries, should put a high price to any decision of Iran to, d to go the extra mile. And they should be, uh, because they are not afraid of Israel, you saw that they attacked us and they, they, they were not worried from w how we will retaliate, probably. Uh, even if they were, were worried, they decided to take yeah. the chance. Wow. But, uh, but they, from the U.S., they are, they are, they are very concerned. And therefore, I think it's very important to put it publicly, not just in a diplomatic channels or something, to put it publicly as a commitment on the side of the, uh, as President Biden has said, uh, Iran will not have a nuclear bomb on my watch or something like that. And previous uh, presidents have been saying it. I think it's important that every president, even if it's an, just a candidate, or it, will come out and say it in a way that, uh, that commits himself Amen. For that, and this is the I think the 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 way to make sure that Iran doesn't do the extra mile. It, it seems that Iran's tactics have always been misdirection. So if we want to protect ourselves from our agenda, we get the world focused on something else. So in this moment with Israel, the the t it seemed to shift from they've attacked Israel, the world supports Israel, and now they've shifted it to this anti-Semitic, you know, the world is now focused socially on how we, we have to stand against Israel because of all these atrocities that Israel is doing. All the while, the world's focused on their anti-Semitic perspective. Iran continues in the background to, no to do all of this. Um, why is it so important that the world doesn't fall for this anti-Semitism that's once again rising up, this unnatural hate of the Jewish people uh, first of all, it's um, it's very it's important. I don't want to conclude, the, but uh, because there are a lot of elements there, but I think what what I can see already is that it's a combination of different uh, agendas. It's not only the uh, anti-Israel, uh, pro-Palestine uh, agenda, mm -hmm. which most of the uh, of the students and others that are that are following. Uh, actually don't know the details and when you ask them uh, yeah. from the river to the sea they don't know what, what kind of a river yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's really uh, uh, un but it's um, what what uh, but it's important because uh, what I think is that um, some ones uh, Palestinians other Muslims have succeeded in the last one or two decade to um, to um, establish the basis of, uh, of the dialogue that Israel is oppressing the Palestinians are the oppressors, the uh, oppressed people, and Israel is oppressing them, and it it uh, falls into the uh, 
um, the um, language, the new language of, uh, of, uh, uh, that has also uh, good elements, of course, in, in it, that supporting those, uh, those that, are, uh, that are suffering and, uh, and others. And here I think it's a, it's a combination. I read uh, uh, details about the campuses, people that were arrested. So in most campuses, uh, there were uh, between 60 to 80 percent people that were not students at all. Oh, wow. Yeah. So this is, you understand that they succeeded to bring people that have agendas again against, uh, I don't know, against the U.S., uh, mm -hmm. against uh, everything. Uh, I don't know what, what are other agendas. And they feel that this is the time to come out together and to protest against something. Uh, I think, um, I hope, that the U.S. Uh, administration, this one or this next one, will uh, dive, in, dive into it because it's very important to understand the elements of this um, uh, antagonism, uh, also against the American system and uh, and also against o other uh, issues, because this is something that um, is growing very quietly. You don't see it until it. It uh, burst uh, uh, happened. It's uh, so I think it's um, uh, it's a wake up call in a way, and uh, should be should be understood, and they should be dealt. Not uh, only I don't think I, when I mean uh, saying dealt, I don't mean only punishment or something yeah. like that. No, I mean education uh, yeah. and other things, of course. Seems to be these groups are very well organized, and yeah. they have amazing marketing campaign. They know how to infiltrate the minds of. Uh, the weak, I, I say yeah. it as weak. Um, and so you have these kids on college campuses saying, we are Hamas, destroy Israel. Then how do you fight Hamas? What's the best way for y'all to succeed in eliminating the threat of Hamas when everybody's against you? So when, when I ask, uh, I'm talking about that, people tell me, so you know, uh, Muslims are million people, uh, billion people uh, all over the world. And what the Jews are, you know, <laughs> yeah. Nine million, nine million here, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, this is the answer, but it's not uh, good enough. Uh, it's partially uh, correct, but it's not. Uh, uh, I think we have um, avoided and we have um, forgotten uh, those uh, fields of what we call uh, uh, soft, uh, soft uh, diplomacy and soft uh, war and the means that are, uh, and uh, it's not. Um, it's something that should have been done for years, and Israel should put money on that. Mm. Israel and others should put money on that. It's not only it's not only that you have good airplanes. You you need to have also the infrastructure of the of the hearts of the people, mm. and I think one of one of the elements is to um, to give the uh, concrete information, even if the information is not always supporting Israel's policy, yeah. but put the the. Si the complexity of the situation, that, that's the way that I always handle it when they ask me, but you are occupying the West Bank. I say, yeah, correct, but it's, let's put it on the table. What are the different components of this situation and how many times we have this started a uh, dialogue with the Palestinians in order to achieve a kind of an understanding and it never succeeded. Why? Let's put all the, it, it, nothing is black and white. And what they are demonstrating now in the campuses is black and white. Yeah. And always it's a mixed, it's gray. Some, some, uh, some things are right on the Israeli side, some on the Palestinian, and it is a very a complex situation. But, um, but I really think um, uh, w w I want to bring us back to the 7th of October mm. and to yes. the current situation. And I think that um, uh, Israel has an opportunity now uh, supported by the U.S. Uh, program to be integrated much better in the region. Mm -hmm. And this is a very important element for the security of Israel for the future. It's uh, the um, Ben-Gurion that established the state of Israel was always saying that Israel has should, shouldn't, be a very, uh, shouldn't be a foreign um, element in the region. You know, we are Jews, all others are Muslims, or there are uh, Muslims, Shia and Sunni and others. We shouldn't be uh, s separated from the region, and it took many years and wars and everything until we are today in a peace agreement with Egypt and Jordan, mm. in a normalization with the Emirates and Bahrain and Morocco, and we should be more and more integrated into into the Middle East and be part of it, and uh, 
all those countries that I have mentioned, all of them see Iran as a threat. And I think after the attack of Iran on Israel, they are even more threatened than they were before. So they decided, because they are threatened, that they decided to improve relations with Iran. <laughs> so if you have an enemy, better hold it close to yourself than uh, put him uh, in a situation that he can hurt you. But, um, but no question that they are afraid and concerned from Iran. They don't like the Iranians. They have also this uh, difference between Sunni and uh, Sunni yeah. and uh, uh, Shia. Um, so there are many reasons for that. Israel should try and see how it can do it. And I think we, um, we have to, uh, and in this case, I'm thinking differently from our uh, government. Uh, I think we should find a way how to finish the war in Gaza, of course, taking back our, all our hostages. Uh, yeah, hostages. Terrible issue, um, terrible issue, uh, and, uh, and uh, make it within a, a regional arrangement. Something that Israel will benefit. There is a lot of talking of uh, normalization between us and the Saudis. Mm. Uh, and I think this is very, very important because uh, Saudi Arabia is a symbol in the, in the Muslim world with the Mecca and Medina, the two holy places. And uh, I think this is the only way that Israel can strengthen itself. It's not by more and more missiles. It's by being more integrated into the region, having more uh, uh, economic uh, cooperation. Uh, with the region, and um, we are in a very delicate uh, time today. Mm. I think it's incredible. I, I understand more now why your field is intelligence, because <laughs> listening to you speak in this topic, it just makes so much sense. The, the enemy is trying to make this an emotional issue, and so you have a world that's lashing out of emotion without any education on the topic, any mm -hmm. intelligence on it. Uh, and this seems to be the big problem and people need to stop and obviously pay attention to history to understand the enemy like you said holding them close to understand how they think and how they operate uh, instead of just yelling and screaming and and not having any uh, thought behind what our yeah. movements are yeah well Seema this has been a pleasure I, uh, I believe you have given us so much to think about in our audience Christians and Americans on what they could do to encourage our government to stand up and to stand against uh, not only anti-Semitism, but this, this rogue regime in Iran that seeks to annihilate everyone yeah. <laughs> and yeah. threaten everyone. And I thank you so much for taking the time to, to be with us and educate us today. Thank you, my pleasure. Thank you.